Attention! This makes absolutely no sense. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sanders Facts. Sanders Facts on a weekday or a weekend. Depends on when you're listening. On a weekday, though. On a Wednesday, April 28th. 2021. Hello, everyone. This is the Xander's Facts Podcast. I am the aforementioned Xander. I said we're releasing this on the final week of April. So sad, but it's going to be May. And I'm recording this right now, and it's 85 degrees outside. So we are rolling, heading into summer. But thank you all for listening. And remember, if you like the Xander's Facts Podcast, and clearly you do because you've been listening for all this time, we're on episode 13, then subscribe, download, rate, and review, and follow on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you don't, I will come down to your house and haunt you for the rest of your life. So, you might want to get that done. (laughs) Spread the word. Tell your friends that the Xander's Facts Podcast is the best podcast in the world. And then Xander does have the facts. He does. Baylor, remember that one. And this week, we've got some more predictions to make for the NFL Draft. Some of you might not care, but I do. And I care about taking down Mel Kuyper. That's what we're going to do. Maybe. Mel's a nice guy. But the NFL draft is this week. Also, I just found this out because I didn't even know the Kentucky Derby's this week. But I don't support horse racing. So we're not going to talk about that. Plus, there's no Xander in the lineup. There's no horses named Xander. So I said, I don't care about that. Like, Shoffley, Xander Shoffley, golf. You know how much golf I've been watching recently? It's been incredible, because Xander Shoffley. Because he's my guy, and he's going to win this weekend. If he's playing the Valspar Championship on the PGA Tour. Get that out of here. Might win, might not, I don't know. But the reason that we are here this week is the NFL Draft. Because it begins Thursday. It's huge! We haven't talked about the NFL much on this podcast because we started the podcast back in January before the Super Bowl and then tapered off because there hasn't been much going on. But the offseason is a big deal because there's a bunch of players going all over the place. Like my my football team, my WFT Washington football team, has a new quarterback, Ryan Fitzmagic. Fitzpatrick. (laughs) Bye-bye. We haven't even talked about that. We'll talk about that because the they're going to draft here. So the draft begins on Thursday, the first round. That's all I'm predicting. So it won't be that long. We're not going to go all seven rounds. The second and third rounds are Friday. And the rest of the rounds are on Saturday. We're only going to do the first round. So just you know, breathe a sigh of relief. This is not going to be a five-hour long podcast because that's how long it probably take. It also take me long to produce, and I ain't even do that. So this draft is actually taking place in person for some people. They're only going to have a couple of players there, and the rest are going to be at their homes, but it's going to be in Cleveland, Ohio this year with Roger Goodell, the commissioner. And so the fans will be there. They'll be able to boo him just like normal. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be amazing. So first, before I give you my picks, and remember, write these down because on Thursday... When you're watching the draft, and you start seeing these picks, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, Xander picked every single one of these. And I'm going to be like, yep, Xander's facts. So Xander's facts? But first, there are four teams that don't have any first-round picks. We won't even talk about We'll talk about them here. But they are, the first one is the Houston Texans, the only team on this list that did not make the playoffs. Oh, Houston, why? They didn't. Yeah, they did terrible last year. And Deshaun Watson, he wants to be traded, but apparently he did some bad stuff. We haven't even talked about that on this podcast. He's done bad things, maybe. I don't know. But they have a new head coach in David Culley. So, you know, they don't even have a first round pick. And they went 4-12 and last year. That's terrible. That was terrible. So, we'll see. And then, the second team is the Los Angeles Rams. Los Angeles! The Rams, who have a new quarterback this season. We talked about this on the podcast, remember. Matthew Stafford is no longer a Detroit Lion. He is a Los Angeles Ram. They got rid of Jared Goff. So how are they going to protect Matthew Stafford? Because 
eh, you know, they were in this, the Rams were in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. They didn't win, and they haven't been back since. They haven't really been close. So, you know, they got some work to do. The third team is the Hawks, Seattle Seahawks. So there were trade rumors this offseason with Russell Wilson. Like, oh, is he going to go to Chicago? The Chicago fans didn't like that. That didn't happen. But you know how many picks Seattle has in this draft? In the entire draft, not just the first round, because they don't have any in the first round. Out of all seven rounds, the Seahawks have three, uno, dos, tres, three picks in the entire draft. Oops. That's insane. That's like by far the least. <laughs> I mean. So how are they, because apparently, you know, there's some falling out between Wilson and the organization. So how are they going to be able to regain his trust? I don't know. They only have three picks. They've got the talent there, you know, around them, but yeah, we'll see. And the last team is a team that did very well last year and the year before. The Kansas City Chiefs. They did have a pick. They had the 31st pick, but they traded it this weekend. So now they're out of the first round. And their big need is offensive line. So those are the four teams who do not have any first-round picks. So now we're done talking about them. They're done. Over. Get that out of here. So now we can go officially to the first ever Xander's Mock Draft. Woo! So <laughs> what does this mean? Here we go. Big time. Got your pen and paper out because you're going to have to write these down. You're going to have to remember all these picks. Some of these are a little out there. So, first pick, the Jaguars. Jacksonville has the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. So, how about this? With the first pick in the draft, Xander thinks the Jaguars are going to select Trevor Lawrence T-Law from Clemson. Whoa, I mean, did you... Think that was gonna happen? That's cool. If you know anything about that, that was not a surprise. It's the easy pick. And Jacksonville has a new head coach this year. Urban Meyer. Urban <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. And how about this? For Trevor Lawrence. I found out this week, doing some research, because you know, Sanders Facts comes, you know, with sources, that Lawrence signed a first of its kind deal with a crypto company this week called Blockfolio, which is a service where you can buy crypto on it, Bitcoin and that stuff, where his signing bonus for that company will be entirely in cryptocurrency. I mean, how about that? First of its kind. How about this? I own some Bitcoin and Dogecoin. I do. Dogecoin to the moon! That's All right, but that's what uh, Trevor Lawrence is thinking. <laughs> Number two! The number two pick belongs to the New York Jets. Oh, New York Jets have a new head coach, too. The first Muslim head coach in the history of the NFL, Robert Sala. The 49ers defensive coordinator last year. He was pretty good. They think he's going to be really good. So they also think this pick's going to be really good because Xander thinks that the Jets are going to select with the second pick, quarterback Zach Wilson. BYU. No. Uh, I mean, his draft stock has shot up. He was pretty good last year. Second pick, uh, he had a pretty good pro day. And his ability to understand the game of football in a way that, you know, only the best can do. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. When you think of those guys, you know, they're not the most athletic guys in the world, but they understand what defenses are bringing at them. And they understand the game of football. Gotta see game football. So that's what <laughs> that's what they like about Wilson. So that's who I think they're gonna pick. Number two. Did you write those down? I hope so, because now we're going on to number three. The 49ers. San Francisco. San Francisco actually was at twelve, and they traded up to the third pick, which belonged to the Dolphins. So they traded up to the third pick. Well, there's no way they're not gonna get a quarterback, right? I mean, come on. They've got Jimmy G. But uh, Jimmy G had issues last year, injury and playing issues. So it looks like maybe they'll give him another year and they'll see how this rookie quarterback does, you know, if he can pass him. So we'll see. This rookie quarterback, who I think they're going to draft, 
is from the Ohio State University, Justin Fields. Yes, indeed. Justin Fields. So the rumor, as of now, Tuesday, April 27th, when I'm recording this, is that the 49ers are down to Jones and Fields. Mac Jones, I meant, the Alabama quarterback. And the issue here is that Fields actually admitted earlier this month, according to Ian Rapport, that he deals with epilepsy, which has not caused any issues with football yet, but hopefully it won't. So there's a lot of organizations that are like, oh, I don't know about Justin Fields. He's got, you know, we'll see. Off the field issues, maybe? I don't know. But I think that San Francisco makes the right decision in the end. They get Fields. Who's the third best quarterback of this draft, I think, behind T-Law and Zachary? Fight me. I wonder if his name's actually Zachary. Number four belongs to the Atlanta Falcons, who will get this guy. They've been raving about this guy, and I'll tell you who it is. The Falcons will select, according to Xander, tight end from Florida, Kyle Pitts. The Pitts. <laughs> he is not the Pitts, though. He is the greats. <laughs> oh, boy. That was bad. But, okay, so here's the thing. Miami, who had the third pick, then had the 12th pick, then moved up to six, might move back up to four because they like Pitts so much. Everybody is looking at him as having the potential to be one of the greatest tight ends in the history of football. I mean, you know, that's, whoa. Slow down a second. But it's true. They think he's going to be amazing. Florida's got a lot of players in this draft. And he's the best. So that's who the Falcons are going to get, I think. Write that down. Number five, Cincinnati. The Bengals, who had the first pick in last year's draft. And they selected Joe Burrow. And then Joe Burrow got injured. So who are they going to select this year? How about an offensive tackle from Oregon, Pinay Sewell? It's the only correct choice for them because their offensive line was terrible last year. And in the game against Washington... Burrow, oh, bad, bad injury. And he's got a scar on his kneecap from the surgeries that he had to do. It is bad. Wasn't Alex Smith bad? Because he's going to be playing next year. But it was pretty bad. Alex Smith retired. Did you hear that? I mean, holy cow. So that's who the Bengals are going to select. And then with the sixth pick is Miami, the Dolphins, who I said earlier they might trade up, but I don't think so. Because they can get a good pass catcher at six. A guy who they are going to want. That guy, Jamar Chase from LSU, wide receiver, will be the next weapon for Tua Tagovailoa. So, you know, Miami was regarded as a big trade option for Deshaun Watson. That's, I don't even know. But, so, you know, it looks like they're going to stick with Tua. And they signed Will Fuller from the Texans in the offseason. He was with the Texans. So, you know, they've got Harker out there at receiver. If they put Jamar Chase there, too, from LSU, uh, that's three really, really good receivers that if Tua can't get it done with those three, I mean, you know, you start to, like, "Eh, I don't know about Tua. They need offensive weapons. So they might trade. I don't think they will. And number seven, all right, so, you know, we're going down receivers here in the top ten because there are a bunch. And this is another one for Detroit at number seven, the Lions. So they did the trade with Los Angeles for Goff, Stafford, that one. So now the Lions have Jared Goff as their quarterback, and they have a new head coach, Dan Campbell. Man Campbell. So they will select, remember this, wide receiver from Alabama, Devontae Smith. Yes, they will. Because they need to rebuild their depleted receiver core. They've got TJ Hawkinson, who's a pretty good fantasy player, if you know what I mean. But they lost Kenny Galladay to New York, the Giants. So they're getting, you know, Jared Goff doesn't have very many options. And Devontae Smith, even though he's like six foot, 160 pounds, he's really skinny. But he's long. And he's got big hands, so he can catch the football. That's what they're worried about. But I don't I don't think it'll be an issue, because he can roll. If you saw the national championship game, he was getting those dimes. 
So they're going to have to focus on the offense for this first pick. But I'll say this. Here it comes. The Lions may be in a position to trade down if they get the right offer from a team that needs a quarterback. May it be Denver, New England, Chicago, Washington, all those teams who need future quarterbacks. They, well, Denver maybe not, but we'll we'll talk about that because they're in two picks. But the Lions... That seven pick is one of those picks where you can see Detroit trading down because, you know, they need a receiver, and they would get a really good receiver. But is that, you know, absolute necessity that they wouldn't trade for the right offer? I don't know. Number eight, a team that also needs a receiver, is Carolina, the Panthers. Matt Rule is their coach. He's second year from Baylor. They'll get a wide receiver, too. And they'll also get a wide receiver who went to Alabama last year. Wow. Wow. How about that? This man's name is Jalen Waddle. He waddles pretty well up the field, I'll tell you that. But they don't need to draft a QB. Panthers don't because they just traded for Sam Darnold from the Jets. That's why the Jets are getting Zach Wilson because he's going to be their day one starter. And they have last year's starter, Teddy Bridgewater. So they really don't need a quarterback a couple people are thinking they do please but so there's a lot of options here not just wide receiver they could emphasize their offensive line they could short the secondary they could add to the receiving core i think they'll choose the latter because they want to see if sam darnold's got the goods if you know what i mean so the second straight alabama wide receiver select how about that and the second of many alabama players that are going to be picked in this draft and in the first round i got a couple more for you i mean you know that's another spot where there could be a trade. If Carolina, then a lot of people are predicting that uh, for a quarterback hungry team. We'll see. But number nine, oh, I alluded to this earlier. Denver, the Broncos. So they've got a decision to make too, because they have a chance to get a nice QB at nine. But they've got Drew Luck. Drew Luck, who spits out the rhymes and dimes. <laughs> well, maybe not the dimes. But the rhymes, if you know what I mean. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, are they going to stick with him? Or are they going to start developing the next guy? Because he, you know, it was bad last year for Denver. And this is his third year, I think. This is make or break. But there is a guy who fits perfectly into Denver's system defensively. And that guy is linebacker from Penn State, Micah Parsons. I think he fits perfectly into what they're trying to do, Denver. They're tough. That's Von Miller physical defense for the Broncos. That's what carried them to that Super Bowl a few years ago. But they could trade if they want a QB. They won't pick one here, though. So Denver gets Michael Parsons. They get a good one, too. Number 10. Oh, boy. Number 10 marks the f- first of three straight NFC East picks. But this is the bad one. The boys. The Cowboys. Jerry World. Overrated. So Dallas is loaded on offense. I don't know if you know. But Dak Prescott's coming back next year. He signed a deal with Dallas, finally. Jerry Jones, stop being cheap. He said, we'll pay you. So they need to focus on defense. Because their defense allowed nearly 30 points per game last season. It was brutal. And they need help in the secondary. And this guy is going to help them in the secondary. Cornerback from Alabama. What did I say? Another Alabama one. Patrick Sertan. Yes. He probably, if the Cowboys stick at 10, he's the guy who the Cowboys are probably going to have on the top of their board. You know, third Alabama selection in the top 10, but he was really good at Alabama. A bunch of people were, please, Alabama. Where's the cheating? Third Alabama player. That's ridiculous, man. Come on. How about that? I don't know. He'll be good for the boys. I hope not. But number 11 (laughs) is the Giants. Hold on! Breaking news, breaking news. We gotta trade. The Giants are gonna trade. They haven't, but they will. Oh, first trade. How about this? The Giants are gonna trade the 11th pick to... Here comes a fact. The Chicago Bears. Yes, because the Bears need a quarterback. They do. So the Giants, you know, they got Galladay, as I said, from Detroit, but they probably want another wide receiver. But the top three ones are gone by the time they get to 11. So they'll probably trade back for a, you know, trade with a quarterback-hungry team. Like Chicago, who signed Andy Dalton to a one-year deal, but Dalton, one-year deal, 
They got rid of Trubisky. He's off backing up Josh Allen in Buffalo. So now they're going to get a quarterback. And who is that guy going to be? How about Trey Lance, quarterback from North Dakota State? Now I know. The last quarterback out of North Dakota State was Carson Wentz. But they thought he was really good. Yikes! <laughs> I think Trey Lance is going to be pretty good, too. You know, they there's five quarterbacks who are going to be picked here at the top. And everyone is like, one of those got to be a bust. I do think one of them's going to be a bust. It's the last one. You know what I'm talking about. But I don't think Lance is going to be. So mm, I think he'll be pretty good in Chicago. This is a great situation because he'll back up Dalton for a year. And the next year is his. And if he can prove he's got the goods, then hooray for Chicago. But, you know, the Bears. Da, Bears. Number 12, last of the NFC East, the Eagles. Philly. So they don't need a top 10. Philly actually had the sixth pick. Remember that game against Washington in the final week of the season where they didn't even try? Yeah, to get the high draft pick. Doug Peterson did that. Now he's gone. Now he's not even the coach anymore. <laughs> now they have a coach who I don't know if he knows the game of football very well. But I don't know the game of football very well. So they traded out of the top 10, which means they're probably not going to get a quarterback. So they probably are saying, you know, Jalen Hurts, we're probably going to stick to you. Carson Wentz, I don't even know if he's on the team. But so the Eagles are going to look to help their secondary this time. Defense. They need help because... They signed a pricey cornerback last season, Darius Slay, and he didn't do well last year. So they're going to get a guy from the SEC, South Carolina, who's also a cornerback, defensive back. How about J.C. Horn for the Eagles? I think so. Yeah, they'll, you know, they'll do okay. <laughs> I, I mean, the Eagles, please. He might do. I don't know. I hope he doesn't. Number 13, I hope he does. The Chargers! Oh my gosh, the Chargers got the steal of the draft last year. Justin Herbert. Herbie. Oh my gosh, he was amazing last year. And he wasn't even on my fantasy team. That would have been, oh my gosh, he picked him up. Wow. So, what are the Chargers going to do naturally? Well, their defense is amazing, so they're going to stick on offense. They're going to protect him. How about with the f second Offensive tackle taken to the draft from Northwestern, Rashawn Slater. Yeah, this is a draft that has a couple of really good offensive tackles. Rashawn Slater is one of them. I said Sewell from Oregon at five, and because you know there's in a normal year, you'd probably get three, four offensive tackles picked to the first ten picks, but that's not going to happen this year because so much talent, quarterbacks, receivers. Oh, the special positions. So they get a steal. They get a steal. Because in a normal draft, Slater would not fall to 13. He's really good. And Herbie. I love Herbie! 14. The Vikings of Minnesota. Oh, I like this pick. You know where I'm going. The Hokey! Offensive tackle, Christian Derisaw. Who? The first Hokey off the board. Hokies are going to get two picks in this first round. You know, it was only a couple years ago where they didn't get any picks in the whole draft. That was rough. It's been a rough time. Uh, but but they'll get two picks in the first round, and they'll get more later on. Christian Derisaw. Yes, sir. They're going to protect Kirk Cousins. He's really good. 15. I don't like this one. The Patriots. Boo. They... So the Patriots are one of those teams who people are talking about, oh, are they going to trade up for QB? That's not how Bill Belichick's done. So, uh, you know, he's not into that new style stuff where we're going to trade up for a pick. We're gonna, you know, that's what the Chiefs did, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, they're not going to do that. But they're still going to get a quarterback at 15. And probably the guy they want, Mac Jones, quarterback, Alabama. Well, all right. I sat out of the five quarterbacks that are going to go in this first draft. I think one of them is a bust. And I think that one is Jones because he, out of all of them, has the least athleticism. But if he can succeed anywhere, it's New England. Because guess who else doesn't have athleticism very well? Tom Brady. I didn't say that right. Tom Brady didn't. And now, you know, if anybody can help Mac Jones, it'll be Bill Belichick. 
because Mac Jones was throwing Alabama to a hasn't shown he's, you know, NFL elite quarterback. So Alabama hasn't had really any great quarterbacks since Joe Namath. Yeah, probably before that. But, you know, I don't know about the Patriots. But I do like this next pick, the Cardinals at 16. Oh, boy, they need help in the secondary. So who are they going to get? Cornerback, Caleb Farley. The Hokies, a Hokie, Virginia Tech. Well, he opted out last year, but that's okay. He's still a Hokie. They're still going to say Virginia Tech. But he's got some health issues. So this the help, he's probably the most talented defensive back of the draft. And the only reason he's not going to be the first defensive back selected is because of the health issues. He underwent back surgery last month. He's had some health issues uh, before. so And the Cardinals need help. They let Patrick Peterson go in free agency. So, you know, and they're going to have to add to that defense because, I mean, you got to give my boy Kyler Murray help. Murray! I, you got to give him help. That was a bad, ugh, yeah, fantasy. It was bad. All right, because I had him. <laughs> but Caleb Farley, the second Hokie to be selected in the first round. How about that? I love my Hokies. The Raiders at 17. Oh, so they say they're all in on Derek Carr. He's their quarterback. That's what John Green's saying, their head coach. Well, prove it. And they will. Offensive tackle, Aliyah Vera Tucker! USC. They're going to get, they're going to have to overhaul that offensive line. And it'll help lead it. Because that's what Derek Carr needs to be successful. I think they'll get it done. 70, the Raiders. Now, 18, the Dolphins. Again, yeah, they have two picks. <laughs> the Dolphins are rolling. And this time, so they used the sixth pick on the receiver, Jamar Chase. So they got another weapon for Tua. So this time they're going to turn to defense. How about that? And they lost Shaq Wilson on the defensive line. So that's a need that's going to have to be filled, and it will be. They're going to stick in. Ta- they're going to stay in town. They're going to go across the stadium, and they're going to say, "Jalen Phillips, defensive end from the University of Miami, come on down." So he has some health issues that uh, you know. But so those are going to push him back to 18 because he's really talented. But Miami's going to get him. They're going to keep him in Miami. He's going to win. Oh, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what's thing Miami next season. I mean, there are. Who knows? So let's move on. Oh, my gosh. Probably my favorite pick of all. 19. Washington. WFT. The football team. Washington's got a lot of options here. They could go receiver. They could go offensive line. They could go linebacker. Those would all make sense. And they added wide, they added Curtis Samuel this offseason for Carolina for receiver. So they gave another option for the quarterback. But they're going to give it another one here. How about this? From the University of Florida. The second pick from Florida in this draft. Receiver, Kadarius Tony. Tony. He's going to set the tone. Good tone. He joins Samuel and Terry McLaurin and Logan Thomas. Those are four options. For Ryan Fitzpatrick that are going to be really good. That's a fact. Fitzpatrick. Oh, I don't know. They could, Washington's one of the teams that if they wanted to, they could draft up and say, how about a quarterback? Um, you know, talking about maybe going up for Trey Lance. I've got Lance getting picked at 11. Some people have him higher. So, eh, I don't think they will. I like Washington. They'll win the Super Bowl. The Bears traded their pick to the Giants, remember? So the Giants have the 20th pick now. And so they got some draft capital and trading back to 20. And they're going to get one of their top targets. They're going to get a linebacker from Notre Dame whose name is Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. Yes. The defense. So the defense was a strong point last year for the Giants. But they do have a weak point. It's linebacker. So this pick, you know... And this is a guy who can slot into the corner, too. This is a guy who the Giants are going to like. I won't, though, because he's on the Giants. 21. <laughs> the Colts. Oh, another trade for Jaguars! Another trade. The Colts trade to the Bills. Buffalo. And guess who the Bills get? Travis Etienne. The second pick for Clemson, the running back. So the Colts, they need offensive line help. 
They don't find any solid options at 21, so they trade down. And the Bills are eager to build around their franchise quarterback, Josh Allen. And Devin Singletary, eh, he's okay last year at the running back spot. But a lot of people are thinking ETN over Najee Harris, who's the other running back that's going to get selected in this first round. Might be the best running back of the draft. And you might have to trade up if you really want to get him. That's what Buffalo's going to do. They're going to trade up from 30 to 21 to get ETN. 22, we're in the playoff teams now, man. The Titans. Elijah Moore, Ole Miss wide receiver, so that they need some serious help. They lost Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, and John U. Smith all in the offseason. Those are three reliable targets that Ryan Tannehill had last season that are not there. They still have A.J. Brown, who also went to Ole Miss. So the, <laughs> they were teammates, and now they're going to be teammates again. How about that? The Titans need wide receiver help. They get it at 22-23. Is the Jets. Their second pick of the first round. How about this? So they got the quarterback they want. Now they go from the offense to the defense. Their defense, golly, it was horrible last year. So they're going to get who some think might be the best defensive end of the draft. I don't think so. But Quiddy Pay from Michigan. So they, they're going to go with an edge rusher who showed the most probably last season out of talent-wise. That's what it, no, that's what people are saying. Kuiper, McShay. We'll see. Xander. You only need to listen to Xander. Listen to these picks. 24, the Steelers. Hold on a minute. Yikes. Let me tell you something. Pittsburgh looks in trouble. They, they are in trouble. They started like, what was it, 9-0? and And the Washington football team beat them? And it was just a collapse? And Ben Roethlisberger's contract... I think they revamped it, but it, you know, $40 million against the cap. They're not going to be able to do anything. And they lost James Conner in free agency, their top right running back. So they're going to have to get a guy. They might have to reach here, and they will. Najee Harris, Alabama, I said him earlier, second best running back of the draft. A lot of people are only thinking he's going to be a day two guy, second round. But the Steelers, that's a big need, so they're going to have to reach. The Steelers, oh, sorry, but... It just, I don't see them doing, I don't see them getting to the playoffs next year. Talk about that later. Jaguars at 25, their second pick of the draft. So they got their quarterback. They got T-Law. Trevor Lawrence, did you know he got married? The Jaguars, they need help on offense. So they need help protecting Trevor Lawrence specifically. So they're going to use this pick on offensive tackle Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State. So he's also going to help improve the running game. As I would know, James Robinson, breakout running back on my fantasy team. He did pretty well. Uh, so it's definitely going to be an improvement for Jacksonville. They're going to be a lot better this, next year. They got T-Law. He's pretty good. <laughs> the Browns at 26. Oh, the Browns were surprised. They were really, really good last year. They got a lot of help on defense, too. They got Takaris McKinley. They got Jadavion Clowney on the defensive line. So a lot of people are thinking they need another guy on the defensive line. Well, they've got Miles Garrett there too, so no. But linebacker core, that second tier back there. How about linebacker Zaven Collins from Tulsa? Ooh, you know. He, he can provide aid on that D-line too when it's necessary. That's what he did at Tulsa. So, you know, I like this kid. I think he's going to do pretty well. If they, if the offense stays hot like they did last year with Baker Mayfield and their defense keeps improving along, Cleveland could be a true title contender next season. <laughs> That's not something that has been said in a long, 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 long time in Cleveland. <laughs> it's the truth. The Browns. 27. Baltimore. So the rumor for the Ravens is that so they have the 27th and 31st pick. They're going to use one of those for a receiver. I don't think it'll be the first one they have. I think they'll go defense here. I think they'll go on the defensive end. Jason Owe, Penn State. Another Penn State guy drafted. Wow. So, you know, they're talking about that because Jackson, Lamar Jackson, their quarterback, needs assistance with his receiving core. But the defense lost Matthew Juden and Yannick Ngaku on the defensive line. Like, 
they, they that's the defensive line's at the top of their knees list right now. But here's the thing: Away only started eight times at Penn State last season, so he's gonna need you know he's gonna need some build up. But his upside is probably as high as any there is on the defensive line in this draft. So, you know, and the Saints will go that direction, too, at 28. New Orleans is going to pick a defensive end. They won't do it from the Big Ten, though. They'll go down to the SEC. They'll do, from Georgia, they'll pick Aziz Uhulare. They need to focus on defense. The Saints are going to have a new quarterback. Is it going to be Winston, Jameis Winston? Is it going to be Taysom Hill? Because Drew Brees retired. They need help, some help with the linebacking core, too. They don't need really help offense. But Uhulare... He's grown in popularity this offseason. He was going to be a day two pick. Nah, you know, up at 28. We'll see. I don't know. The Saints are pretty good. They'll be a pretty good team next year. But the Packers are also a really good team. And they're picking at 29. So this is this is a team that was in the NFC Championship last year. And remember we talked about that? Oh, my gosh. Their coach, what he did? Rodgers! Ah! I don't know. All right. But Aaron Rodgers has been angry. And there's been a lot of rumors that he's not going to go back to Green Bay. He's going to get traded or, you know, he's going to demand a trade or he's going to leave in free agency because they haven't been giving him help. So they're going to, they're listening. and They're going to respond here. The Packers are. Wide receiver, Rashad Bateman, Minnesota. Yes. They're going to get the, you know, they've got Devontae Adams, who was one of the best receivers in the league. But they're going to get another top receiver here to help compete next year. So he, you know, this guy checks the boxes. He's going to be a great fit for Rodgers. Packers offense. Rashad Bateman. What else can I say? Good fantasy pick. Next year. Uh, we'll see. Aaron Rodgers. If he doesn't get the Jeopardy game. No, no, not. <laughs> Number 30. Oh. Remember I said the Bills were at 30 and they traded to the Colts? So the Colts have this pick now. And they wanted an offensive tackle. Eh. But they can't find one. So... You know, they may even trade, there's rumors they may even trade back out of the first round from, you know, 21 or from another pick to find the offensive tackle they want. But I think they found a guy on defense they like. Linebacker Jamin Davis from Kentucky. Oh, big blue nation. That's not true. Davis works for Indy alongside DeForest Buckner, Darius Leonard. They're crazy on the defensive. He's going to improve an already great defensive front in Indianapolis. That is one of the best in the league. Their defense is going to be stellar. They just need to find a quarterback. I don't know who it is. I think they have one. I don't remember. Carson Wentz, they do. Oh, my gosh. I just remembered they got Carson Wentz. Man, that was rough. Well, eh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carson Wentz. No, 31. The Ravens, oh, so the Ravens are back. So they, I said they need a receiver. They'll pick one here. How about from LSU, Terrace Marshall Jr. So Marshall would serve as an outside receiver. That's what Jackson needs, a guy who can run any route that Jackson wants because, you know, Lamar Jackson is known for run, not known for passing. He's known for running. He's a good, pretty good passer, though. So, But Marshall's going to help him out a lot because they need help receiving. And they'll get that. So, 31. Now we go to the last pick of the draft. There's 32 picks in the first round. And the last pick in the first round belongs to the champions of the Super Bowl 55. Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers. Oh, yes. They returned almost all their starters from last year. Like, that's insane. So, like, they really don't have any needs. But I don't think they'll trade back. I think they'll pick a guy. I think they'll pick a good guy. A defensive back. Who, you know, the Bucks secondary has been pretty good. But they'll add Greg Newsome, the second from Northwestern. Whoa! Last pick of the draft, and it's probably a, probably a steal, too. A lot of people have Newsome going a lot higher. I don't. Because this is Xander's mock draft. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, there you go. All 32 picks in Xander's NFL mock draft. Hope you wrote them down. I hope you remember. Slow down, buddy. Because next week, we're going to be bragging about it. <laughs> next week, I don't know what we're going to do next week. So, that concludes this week's edition of the Xander's Facts Podcast. Thank you again for listening. And remember, 
If you think my picks in the NFL mock draft were great, then subscribe, download, rate, and review. Follow on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And once I get all the picks right, you can tell all your friends and spread the word everywhere. The Xander's Facts Podcast is the greatest podcast in the world. Well, it is. You wouldn't be telling lies. You'd be telling facts. Xander's Facts. Uh, Xander's okay. Facts. I don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but it's probably going to be good. All right. But this edition of Xander's Facts Podcast is officially in the books. So we'll see you all next week. What the heck does this mean?